Now I have the distinct privilege of introducing to you our student speaker for the day. Our student speaker for the day is a graduate of the Work Ready Peer Support Specialist Program with a 4.0. He is the first student completing the Millard College practicum at the John Walsh Center and also the first student utilizing the Miller College Career Services to complete the program and to secure employment with a full-time position waiting upon him after graduation. But the most important part I want you to know is that in just a few days from now, on June 11th, he will be celebrating one year of sobriety. So please join me in welcoming our spring 2022 student speaker, Michael Osborne. Thank you. This is the definition of surreal right here. Wow, what a day that the Lord has made. This is a super special day for many of us in this room. Many of us in this room. First, I want to recognize and say thank you to the individuals that helped make this day possible and a reality. We not only learned from the teachers and received endless help from the administration and staff at Miller College, but each of us appreciate the fact that everyone in this entire experience from the very start was shown compassion and that you cared about us individually. You believed in us, a lot of times way more than we believed in ourselves. So on behalf of myself and everyone that's graduating down here today, I sincerely say thank you for your time, knowledge, and your love. You're very valued by all of us. <clears throat> alumni, alumni. I've heard that word a lot, you know, I've heard it here, I've heard it there, never gave it much consideration that my name would be in front of that. Alumni, yes, as of this very moment, we are the class of 2022 and officially Millard College alumni. We did it. We did what we set out to do and we accomplished what a lot of us never thought possible. We took a go. We conquered that goal and turned that goal into reality today. As a young child, and even as I grew older, I was the type of kid that would come home from school and hang a C minus proudly on my mother's refrigerator. Some days even a D was okay with me. See, uh, and if we had PE that year, I'd throw a B up there. And uh, we'd get Chuck E. Cheese ice cream. But uh, somehow through it all, I graduated high school. Well, I know how I graduated high school, and it was solely off the back of my mother's prayers. Her prayers alone were the only way I got through high school in many phases of my life in my teenage years. So for my mom, this is a day the Lord has made. This is a special day in so many ways. I never put an honest effort into anything, really. That is until recently. I never tried hard. And I was decent enough to coast through life and never really strived at anything. See, I was decent at a lot of things and even good at a few things. It just so happens most of those things I were good at were illegal. I was adopted as a baby. My parents brought me home from Catholic Charities about a month old and I took that for granted for most of my life. See, sobriety has given me the ability to slow down and appreciate the little gifts in life. I can think clear and deeper than I've ever thought. See, for many years, every day I stated duh. And I made sure I stated a duh with the life of substance abuse. I sure didn't want to think into about all the things I did and remind myself of what I had screwed up and all the people I let down repeatedly and my children who didn't have much of a father and more of a baby's daddy and who just stayed in and out of their lives just enough to cause some real pain. So one of the first things I learned in early recovery was that I sure made a complete mess out of not only my life, but also the lives of every single person that mattered most and who truly loved me unconditionally. And then the next thing I learned is a person gets their real, raw feelings back. And man, I, I didn't like that part. But it was essential because now I was faced with the actual and factual truth without a way to hide or run from it. I no longer had drugs to block out and push down the list of mistakes I had compiled over the years. It's crazy, but for 
20 years, I truly thought, and I, I would have bet your money and my money that I, I was a 100% gangster, tough guy, real as they come. But nope, no. About two weeks into recovery, I found out some important things, and the first one was that I'm not a gangster. In fact, I was really worried I was gonna be a crybaby the rest of my life because I cried, and I cried, and I really felt remorse for the people I hurt and embarrassed on many of the things I did. How foolish I wasted away so many of the blessings and even lost my relationship with God. A lot of pain entered my heart, and I recall some of that moments that kept me trying to block out and cover up in my addiction. And one thought that weighed on my mind super heavy was when I recalled a time in 2016, an evening when I called home from prison, and my father answered the phone. In fact, I asked my dad to stand up. Stand up, Dad, that's my daddy. <laughs> so, so I want everyone here today uh, to witness the miracle and the power of Christ. See, that phone call started as normal, and I asked, hey, how is everyone? How's mom? How you guys? How you doing well? And for the first time in 35 years, I heard my father choke up. And I could feel his pain right through the telephone wires and into his heart as my dad replied, Michael, do you realize how hard it is to accept the fact that your mother and I got to go every day knowing that our son is a drug dealer and in prison again? And his pain turned into my pain as I heard the tears from a man who never cries or shows emotion. And there it was, 100 miles away, on the other end of a collect call, without any way to deny or defend myself. My natural response was, no, Dad, that's not true. But it was true. So I apologized and hung up before I started crying around other prisoners. I had no way of getting around the facts, and I was left with no argument because at that moment, he was correct. And the judge's sentence and the paperwork from the courts that said Michael is a traffic controller of substances in the state of Kentucky. And I sure hated that I let my father's down more than angry. He was truly disappointed and hurt from my actions. I pondered about that phone call a lot. Here's a good man who adopted me, raised me well, gave me his last name, which I gave to my children and they'll give to their kids. That shoes, I represent the Osbournes, a family of name of countless generations, and I did a piss, or I did a pitifully poor job with that gifted responsibility. So that night I decided to write my father a letter from my room in the rehab center and let my father know I was truly sorry that that's not who I am anymore. I will go on. Uh, I will give, it's not who his son is and ends up and wouldn't be, that will not be my legacy. When I ascend into heaven, and dad, before you move on, I will show you better than I can tell you. This is a day the Lord has made. This is a special day for so many. And today I have a new piece of paper from Miller College in the state of Kentucky. I'm Michael Osborne, and I'm a graduate of the Col Miller College 2022, and I'm Michael Osborne, I'm a certified peer support specialist in the state of Kentucky. <laughs> in Thank you. Instead of hurting the people in my community, I will devote my life and make a career that will help numerous addicts, hopefully. God willing, I will save some lives and promise to provide hope and give those who lost their own somewhere in active addition some love. So dad, this is the close of one book and the start of a new book. A new story with the first chapter on the restoration of myself and the grace and mercy and the power and blessings from Jesus Christ. I'm here for a purpose bigger than myself, just as every single person in attendance here today is. See, those that are here from a treatment center on behalf of ARC Recovery Centers, you are especially blessed with this unique opportunity. You can now take your shovel and throw it away. You can stop digging the hole and start building the way out. The one that you started to make, the day you committed to your sobriety and embrace the recovery opportunity that God has provided and turn your lives around. We are all handpicked by a power greater than ourselves who I know is God. We are not here by chance. We are here by grace and for a reason. It's no coincidence. And however we ended up in this chair today, 
And in this recovery process, it's for that reason. And that is to have the blessings and rewards that only God can give by living and doing God's will and achieving our godly purpose. See, we rob ourselves and abandon the abundance of blessings that God has prepared for each of us while we are out running the streets, living a lifestyle that involves drugs on a daily basis. See, music and drugs are the two greatest tools on the devil's belt. And this is a disease of mind, body, and soul. It attacks from all angles and solely strips every good quality and good thing we have until we eventually have nothing, not even our spirituality. Addiction takes us till we are left all alone and spiritually empty. So in order to recover, I mean truly and fully recover, we must address the spiritual side of this disease and acknowledge God is the key and the only factor in staying sober and fulfilling our purpose. This is why I love and what ARC and especially the Miller College understands. Both are founded and run on Christian beliefs and practices daily. That's the difference between average good and great, the God factor. So again, thank you Miller College for sticking to your core values and ethics. While we are living in a world and a culture that is doing everything possible to erase those same values and ethics, in a time where so many influencers fail to recognize God, and our society seems to want to make the Bible and the Word of God obsolete for sticking to yours and creating the foundations of your organization around all things godly. Thank you. See, I have a lot of experience in the penitentiary, jails and courtrooms, and I know the streets and that lifestyle. I've been shot at plenty and even 2017 shot dead center of my leg from about two inches, three inches away with a nine millimeter. It was a perfect kill shot according to the police and the UofL hospital staff. They couldn't believe I survived and I left on crutches hours later. Since that day, I don't put my faith in science or things of this world, I put my faith in the Lord. And everyone I've had the privilege to meet that works at the Miller College have put their faith in me and us graduating here today. So absolutely, no one ever treated us none other than respected and appreciated. I never felt I was treated as if my past mattered, but only my future. And personally, I never once felt or reminded the fact that I was an addict or am an addict and always will be an addict or a former convict just a professional important to this community with experience that separated me uniquely to be able to help the community I'm a part of. The Miller College staff pushed me to reach my potential. I was encouraged and guided by some awesome people and they believed in their students and prepared us for this day, a truly special day. This is a day the Lord has made. And when we doubted ourselves, lost faith in ourselves, they always somehow found a way to restore that faith and give us the strength to continue. Anything is possible with good leadership in God. I go on from here, this moment, straight into my career after being first student along with Susan Pierce, who's also graduating, to complete our practicum and internships at the John Walsh Arc Center in Louisville, Kentucky. Hopefully, we have paved the way for future students to follow our paths. And because of all the little things God was blessing me with through this entire year, a super strong support team, a great church and all its members, and they helped me in various ways. The ARC Anywhere program and the compassionate staff at Miller College, each person along this journey loved and saw in me what I never saw in myself. And now I can start my career. My career, this is a kingdom job. It aligns myself and my purpose with God's will. I have an office that has a wall to hang my paperwork on because Miller College helped my father can now accept that his son is not that same person on that phone six years ago, but a peer support specialist, specializing in the fight to end addictions grips on people, loved ones, fathers, mothers, children, and all of life's affected by this epidemic. This is a major step as I continue on with Miller College to become a certified alcohol and drug counselor and a behavior health specialist dealing with other mental health disorders. I can redeem my last name and give it the respect that it is due. Past year I have been tough at times, but surely worth it. You can't put a price tag on value. These are the type of gifts that one can't find in the mall or on a Walmart shelf. These are truly priceless blessings that God wants all of us to experience. Another major gift I received as I continue to string together multiple good choices in a row were my children back in my life. See, a year ago, I decided enough was enough 
I had to do something different. My children didn't have much of a father, and as a father, I didn't have much of value to offer my kids. The court even said I was unfit to have them without supervision, well, on my youngest two at least, and that hurt me. And that kept me in addiction at times to bury that feeling of failure. But today is totally different, and all five of my children are extremely proud and grateful. I took the necessary time to better myself and get a solid foundation in sobriety, because at times I wanted to quit and leave and just go back to my family. I toughed it out and stayed until I had some real value to offer them. I stayed so they could see the transformation and not just hear about it. So I encourage every mother and father in this crowd today to do themselves and their children the most important thing and give them the gift of life, your life. The sobriety and stick to this process out. It's an amazing process that gets better in time. Don't leave until the miracles bloom and we are the parents and role models for our babies. Crisis to career. Crisis to career. Say it again. Crisis to career, that is the model. <clears throat> I'm, I'm so got, glad that God laid this path and that I listened and obeyed his direction. This is a special place. So to everyone behind the scenes and the, especially the local politicians who fight for treatment and rehabilitation over incarceration, those who see the talents and see more in us than addicts and believe in multiple chances to overcome the battle. I'm grateful for you and all you do. This is a special day. This is a day the Lord had made. And finally, I thank God, Jesus Christ, who saved a wretch like me.